Today's show is brought to you by Milwaukee-based Spike Brewing, designer and manufacturer of premium quality home brewing equipment. Is your beer falling flat? Are you sick of setting up all that gear for a brew day and running out to buy propane? Frustrated by the weather dictating your brewing schedule? Take it inside and avoid the cold, wet winter with the turnkey electric system from Spike Brewing. Trusted by homebrewers and pros alike, the Spite system will change the way you brew and take your beer to new heights. And whether you're interested in a simple upgrade from a glass carboy to a stainless steel fermenter, or you're switching from propane to electric, Spite Brewing has the solution for you. Reach out today to spitebrewing.com forward slash homebrew happy hour, and their team can help you figure out what you need to make the most of your brew day. Spite Brewing. Pursue what's possible. Entertaining, Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Hey there, and welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page, or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Steubing. Today, I'm joined by the Director of Operations at cmbecker.com. Oh, wait, this way on the video. Uh, Mr. (laughs) James Carlson, as well as the President Chief Kegwasher, world traveler extraordinaire, a uh, enthusiast of fine wine and proper China in business class on airplanes. There's a whole lot more titles. I think he might have been nominated for a Nobel Prize in 2000. I don't remember. Mr. Todd Burns, gentlemen, how are y'all doing today? Good, good, very good. Did I get all yeah, your? Yeah, awesome. Did I get Glad all your titles? In? Did, uh, oh yes, I am. So, I forget. This is the first episode since y'all been back in country. Y'all got back um, a week ago to the day, right? Wasn't it last Thursday? We did, yes. And um, yeah, and I, I don't know. I don't remember if y'all came. If y'all did, y'all go into the office Friday? No, I do remember. Both of y'all did because of I. Of course, we went into the I, office. What is? What kind of a question is that? I ca- I remember because I called you or Todd called me at like eight oh five a.m. And I was like, oh, no, we're back to this already. Maybe he <laughs> maybe he took an Ambien and he's sleep dialing. We'll see. And no, no, he didn't. He he was working. I said, what are you doing? You're not jet lagged. He goes, I've been up since 5.15. I've been on the emails. And I did this and this and this and this. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I man. should have called you at 5.15. Yeah, well, when I was just up there at headquarters, uh, you I think you got up at like 5.45. And uh, you came over to the barn where I was in one of the rooms and I heard you, it was like shortly after six. You weren't too loud. I just am a light sleeper sometimes. No, I got, I got there a lot earlier than that. I was very quiet. Oh, okay. Well, then I just happened to hear you uh, whenever I you, was working on the computer. So that, yeah, that's what it was. Whatever. Either way, I do want to go over the German trip, uh, a quick recap. I, don't, I say quick recap because I don't want to get butt hurt and 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 um, jealous again. Y'all y'all were really hateful with how y'all sent all that stuff to me, guys. I don't know if you realize the level of trauma that you set on me, but I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> James is just quietly laughing over there. I don't like it. You had James in on it too. James, well, is hey, a... you know what? We've got a care package coming. I think yeah, we do. Change your you, words. Yeah, maybe you ought to be a little nicer to us. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't say anything mean. All I said was observational. Like, <laughs> you had James is the nicest guy ever, and you had him sending me photos on your behalf. Because, like, one day, <laughs> one day, photo, you, the, I wasn't getting the photos from you, Todd. Like, they weren't coming through. And, yeah. and you were like, you couldn't handle that. I, that I wasn't getting jealous. Like, you couldn't handle it. So, you had James go, hey, I, I'm just assuming this is what you did, James. Send him the photos for me because I need him. <laughs> yeah. I need him to see what we're doing right now. Send him the photos, and so I would get the photos from James. I'm like, James, looks like you're having a good time. And then boom, another photo. And then boom, another photo. And then boom, another photo. 
James doesn't we even. We're trying to keep you involved. I mean, next time we'll just ignore you. That's involved? Fine. Oh, shut up! You don't. You don't send pictures of you <laughs> going like rubbing it in my face with the your, your stupid smirk. Like, <laughs> I know what you were doing, but let's. So we had so we had we had a lot of fun. We had a really yeah. good. So the the highlight of the trip, James will agree with me, was we taught Germans in Dusseldorf. How to brew alt beer? How, how often yes, we did. Let me say that. Huh? Yeah, bucket when list I say item. We, I stand around. I I stood around and drank uh, Pilsner, <laughs> and James showed them how to brew alt beer. But you know what I meant. It's like a normal yeah. brew day for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, it was surreal to say the least. Well, and I didn't hear you, Todd. Because I was I had to mute my my thing and, and cough real quick. Did you Did you say what did y'all brew? I didn't hear if you already mentioned alt, that. We brewed alt beer in Dusseldorf. Yes, we and did. Uh, I, I, oh, did you? What kind of what system? It was an all-in-one, right? It was an electric all-in-one. It that was the it was. Uh, yeah, the uh, Brusilla. Brusilla worked great. You know, we, yeah. we actually it's a it's a funny story, but we actually a customer ordered one, and we ordered for them the wrong one. We ordered a two twenty, <laughs> and we took it back and sent them the correct one, and then we were like, hey we'll send the 220 to Europe because it's already, they're already 220. As when we got there, we, you know, of course the plug's different. So we had to cut the plug off and rewire it. But anyway, it worked great. And, uh, well, I'm sold on using the 220 with the, uh, yeah, with, huge difference. It wow. took that long to heat up and, uh, <laughs> between <laughs> mashing because we had uh, four mashing profiles programmed, programmed into that, which is cool feature, by the way. And it would just go to the next one and the next one. We uh, an all in one with a 220 is incredible. Yeah. Well, I'm going to, uh, in fact, the, the Blickman that I had, we have a Blickman here that we got for testing and it's got a switch on it for 220. So I'm going to, I'm going to put a 220 plug on it. That's the only way I'm going to brew with it. Before yeah. the emails come in that Mr. Burns at the set, six and a half minute mark said Blickman, but you actually, it's Anvil. It is Blickman. I know what you meant, but you're talking about the foundry yeah. from Anvil. Sorry. No, no, no. I just, I'm just yeah. saving people Anvil. from, from the, I'm just saving you from the hate mail. I'm going to get, not hate mail. Uh, from, I'm just <laughs> you sa- don't get hate mail, do you? No, no, but did, oh, that's going to be, like, a, that's Todd's an idiot mail. You get that all the time, right? I actually, there was one review. If, so this is a great segue to say, hey guys, if you appreciate the content, go leave us a review on whatever platform <laughs> you're listening to. I, I read them every now and then, and apparently I hadn't read them since the day after Christmas. We ruined some poor guy's running. I, I showed it to, oh, no. I showed it, to, I showed it to Todd when I was up there on Monday. I said, "Oh my God!" He, I was, at, I was working out of his office, and he was like, "What?" I said, "This review on iTunes. This, like, we ruined this guy's Christmas." He, he was like, "It was the day after Christmas. I'm going for my run, and I put in the headphones, and what a waste of my time. They all they did was gab, 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 da, 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 and I could have the information they gave me. I could have had in a four minute segment, and i you know, the only good thing is it made me run faster. So, <laughs> well, so yeah, two things. One, I, I kind of agreed with him, but you know, I mean, Todd did, Todd like did, you jerk. No. And then, <laughs> and then two, does a guy not realize he can just turn it off? <laughs> That's what, yeah. That was That's so what I, they have channels. Well, for. I was hoping we, I was, we, uh, he acted like we had some sort of a deal that wrapped around his ears and <laughs> held a, held the microphone. I mean, the, uh, I, I, yeah, your, your headphones. Yeah, headphones. <laughs> you they bull- held him there until uh, until he finished his run. He couldn't take them off. God, Gun you gun to his head. Listen, sir. Listen. It was I. I, I was hoping he had an, a contact info because I was going to tell him. Well, first off, you're welcome for helping you stay healthy because you ran faster, and yes. I did my part for you because God knows the day after Christmas it's hard to be motivated to run faster. So you're welcome, sir. Um, and yeah, and like, I, but we do realize that Josh goes on and on and on. I mean, we, we all realize. That. Well, that was the silver lining is for once I wasn't pointed out and named by my name. It was just the generic, the host. He put it in plural. I was like, Oh, it's okay, not just, okay. it's not just me. But so we don't go down that trail this time. Let's keep the ball rolling. Y'all did you back, back from Germany. Y'all went back to, I don't know if you were actually in Amsterdam or in that area. Cause you went to a cabin that Stefan has on a beach, yeah. right? Oh, it was really cool. And we, yes, we did go to Amsterdam. Yep. Okay. I just didn't remember if it, you, I didn't get a lot of photos from, from that part of the trip. I don't know if it was because you were already tired of the whole shtick or if you just didn't, <laughs> if you just stopped taking photos, but we were just having so much fun. We didn't even have time to take photos. <laughs> yeah. I do. Believe- but I will say <laughs> we had a guy's weekend. 
they took down the Amsterdam letters, which was kind of. It was funny because we wanted a picture with the Amsterdam letters. And I'm like, it was right here. I swear it was here. I'm losing my mind. I go into a store and I'm like, so is the, are the Amsterdam levers on the other side? I thought they were here. And the guy's like, yeah, they took them down. I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, they put a, a skating rink in where the letters were at. Hey, did y'all skate? No. Okay. <laughs> that was a dumb question. That was a real <laughs> dumb question. We didn't visit any coffee shops, so we didn't skate. That, no. ah, <laughs> yeah, really but, uh, bump. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. People can connect the dots. Um, yeah. And I, yeah, kidding aside, I did. I do appreciate having y'all back. When y'all were gone, we had a great interview with uh, Ryan Austin from Spike, and he also did the live Q&A. I got a ton of great feedback on that. Thank you for everyone who attended and sent in questions for that. And thank you for all the feedback on the episode. I got a lot of good feedback from last week's episode with Joe, where we talked about brewing with bread and 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 doing sour beers it was definitely an episode where uh it, it joe fit right in you know <laughs> like good, like, good. like if i would have brought no, this that wouldn't have been the episode for me exactly if i would have brought a sour question to this episode we would have been like mm, next but next. that's up joe's wheel well so anyway um y'all are back uh before i go into all the patreon spiel and all that uh todd I know y'all are doing a brew day tomorrow, Friday we the are. 7th. You you had some news you wanted to talk about it, so have at it. Oh, so so we're we're going to do a Maybach because, uh, you know, I was thinking to myself, I actually wrote all new descriptions a while back, and when I, when I wrote the Maybach one, it, the big thing was it, it was the spring beer. It's like the opposite of the Oktoberfest. Uh, and and I, so I did some research today. What other spring beers are there? And it, it was, anyway, it was very interesting articles and stuff, and basically it's like, that is the spring beer, the Maybach. That's yeah. so we've got to brew it. So we're going to brew it tomorrow, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. So absolutely. So we, we actually funny. We didn't. We don't have the yeast for it. So we're like, damn it, we can't brew it. We don't have the yeast. And then James, in his infinite wisdom, is like, hey, wait a minute, you just brewed a beer using the same yeast that we need. Which one were we? Uh, the harvest. The harvest. Yeah, Imperial mm-hmm. Harvest. He's like, you just brewed one. It's and we, I literally, it's just finished the diacetyl rest. I'm about to, I'm lagering it right now. We're just going to steal the yeast off the bottom of that and pitch it into this one. So we, we've got yeast. We can brew tomorrow. Well, Yay. James, you are the most, uh, in your your ingenuity never ceases to amaze me, my friend. <laughs> that- yeah, well, you know, it's the best time because we have nice new yeast with that old yeast. We've got the numbers we need for the batch we're going to do. And we have to do a starter or anything it's ready to rock and roll so dude that's awesome that, that's gonna be real cool i the todd was telling me a little bit before the show about spring beers and stuff which we have talked about and we're still doing to my understanding a mars in, in march right we're still planning on doing the mars in as a group and so we're gonna do two beers we're gonna do a mars in and we're gonna do a fest beer because fest beers kind of taken over the mars in at october fest and I think we've talked about that before on the podcast, but uh, I think it'd be fun to kind of brew the old one and the new one and, and have them both on tap. That will be October. 1st. And I'm not sure you told me you've had a fest beer in your beer fridge before. I'm, yes. I'm not sure I had any of it. Yeah, I did. It was really, really good, but I, now I cannot remember what the brand was, but anyway, it was, it was very good. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Okay. You know, good light beer, be a great summer beer too. So, yeah. I'm glad that now y'all are back. You're back into brewing. Like <laughs> when y'all were gone, it was a little quiet, not just because y'all weren't there and Todd's a loud mouth, but the, the, the brew system didn't get used at all. Like no one was brewing. Everyone was just kind of moping. Did, uh, yeah. I worked on books for 12 hours yesterday for a banking meeting tomorrow. And uh, I need to brew. I need to brew. <laughs> so do I. Well, I'm out of beer too. So. I was going to say, I yeah. know James, you need to brew because you're out of beer, man. I'm out of beer too. There's no beer in my kegerator. There were there were six beers on tap, and we had backups for two of them, and it's all gone. Wow. My dad and I are transferring our alt beer that we brewed. Uh, we're transferring it this Sunday. It, it, that Sunday will be a little over three weeks since we brewed it, and uh, that's that should be good time, right, James? I mean, or do oh, I need? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going yeah, back and forth with him. Fine. What did it end up at? Do you remember? Uh, uh, 10, uh, you're talking about our final numbers? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, man, 10, 12, 10, 10. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. I, That's we, where you need to be. Yeah. I was surprised. I mean, the number, you know, it was, 
the the brew day we did a five gallon batch in the in the cooler brew system because I forgot to tell Joe to make me a ten gallon recipe kit and I didn't know how much our efficiency would be affected by using that much equipment for a smaller batch and it it turns yeah. out it didn't affect it at all in a negative way we we lucked out so. That's the story of my life, really. If you look at uh, how <laughs> how I'm still employed, uh, my wife is still with me. I've got beautiful children. I just lucked out, and so brew days it made sense. I lucked out, but yeah, I'm I'm excited about that. And again, y'all brewing. Before we get into the questions, I do have information on our Patreon. The biggest one since Todd happened to mention Imperial yeast just a second ago. Should we do a drum roll? I'm I'm really excited about. But, yeah, but too. your drum roll, your microphone's gonna it's just gonna sound terrible. So don't do the drum roll. But we have partnered with Imperial Yeast. You hear us talking about them all the time. We're always gushing on their stuff. They've never they've never given us a dime. I've never even solicited it. And then finally I was like, hey, what do y'all think about sponsoring our monthly Patreon recipe kits? Those go out to people who uh, contribute $35 a month. You get one every other month or $50 a month and you get a recipe every month. And they said, yeah, just tell us how many packs you need and we will ship them to you. And so for the, I know. Yeah. So huge announcement in my eyes, because before, you know, the recipes are solid and the dry yeast works good. But like Imperial yeast, we, we've not we're not blowing smoke up, you guys. We're serious when we endorse them. Like James has been talking about them before Imperial, before we ever went to their facility and, and they found out who we were. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. long time. You've been a believer of theirs since you've been using it. And then James is a good evangelist, and he slowly converted all of us. Yeah. And I think that— Amen, brother. Yeah, amen, <laughs> brother. And that's almost exclusively what we use in our brew days. So it it, I, it's my favorite partnership for, that we could have possibly done on our Patreon. Like, I'm so excited to be sending out these recipes now with, like, what I consider to be the best liquid yeast in the business. So Absolutely. I, I'll, I'll well, it, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because when we were talking about brewing tomorrow, we didn't have the yeast we needed and we were freaking out. Oh God, we're going to have to use something besides Imperial. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, that's how, that's how we are now. We don't feel like it's going to ferment if we don't use Imperial anymore. Right. I, I, yeah, that's no. true. Yeah. It makes you nervous. And you know, of course it always does. And they, people make other, other, Companies sure. make good products, but man, when you like something and, and that's your go-to, we haven't had any issues with Imperial yeast. Anything I can think of. Can you, Todd? No, it, it, man, it worked good on that last batch I did. Wow. Yeah. And it's Perfect. quick. That's what that's what my dad and I like about Imperial is that it, uh, it you almost come to expect there to be bubbles it, uh, by the end of the evening. <laughs> like you, you put the like we use a Genesis carboy. And, you know, my dad, he'll stay up and it's like 1130 at night. He goes, look, look, there's activity. <laughs> That's awesome. I know. I love how, how excited your dad's become on the home brewing. He, he has. He has. He, it's okay. He's all right. Um, I don't want to talk too much about him. Okay. He listens <laughs> to the show. Cool. Let me get, my dad talks. He, you know, my dad used to homebrew. And uh, every time he tries a beer, he's like, wow, I can't believe how good this is. I just, <laughs> yeah. My beer was never good. He's like. It was either marginal or really bad. So uh, <laughs> it was, I don't think it was a lot harder back then to homebrew. Yeah, yeah, I think so, too. So, yes, Imperial Yeast, thank you so much for your partnership. M current members, you already got the email. We got a lot of great feedback on it. If you Good. join at the $35 level or the 50 that's what you can expect now. And then real quick, our giveaway for February is a $50 gift card to homebrewsupply.com. If you go look at our tiers at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour, I think all of them but the lowest tier give you at least one entry into our monthly giveaway. Last month, Mary Beth won a uh, one faucet basic homebrew kit. And uh, we sent that out this week, along with all the welcome packs for new members who joined at the beginning of this month. And then um, one more thing about our Patreon. We do have an announcement already for our live Q&A. It's going to be on Wednesday, February the 26th at 10 a.m. And it's with Michael Ferguson, people who are already in the industry or go to homebrew cons or have been brewing at all and read are probably familiar with Michael. He goes by Mufasa. He's He's been on the show before. I couldn't tell you what number episode because I don't do my homework, but he uh, is an incredibly fun guy. He used to be based out of San Antonio, and so I, I did the interview that time with him in person. Now he's out in Houston. And he's uh, managing a homebrew shop there. He's been the guy's been on freaking Larry King. And so I think 
After Has he, he really? Yeah, if you type in, if you if you go to Google right now, everybody go to mm-hmm. the Goog and type in Michael Ferguson Mufasa or whatever. At the first video, I bet you that pops up will be him on Quora or Q, whatever it was called with Larry King, his old internet show. Like he got off CNN and then he did mm-hmm. his, he does, I think he still does, right? His own internet yeah, show. Yeah, I think, so. I think you're right. Yeah, and Michael was on there like six years ago or something. It was when he was doing the Beer Geeks TV show. He was managing all the BJ restaurants, uh, uh, brewing operations. The guy's a big deal, and his talks at HomebrewCon are always packed to the, they're all, you know, standing room only type things. And so he's been requested by our listeners for a while. So I reached out to him. I said, like, Michael, hey, remember me? And I always say that because I don't think anyone ever remembers me. And then he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Let's do the show. And yeah, <laughs> that's my, he's a big, He's a big deal, and he's a big guy, too. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's he's, so. he's, He is hilarious. Uh, we had dinner with him at, last year at Homebrew Con, and he uh, he had us in stitches the whole time. So. Yeah, well, I, we had a blast with him at Homebrew Con. That's when I planted the bug, and then he was like, well, just follow up with me, and we'll figure it out. And I finally followed up with him, and he was like, of course I will do it. So the live Q&A with Michael, it's going to be an absolute blast. I'll keep talking about it uh, as the month goes on. But anyway, our patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour is a lot of exciting things going on. So join us if you want, or if you don't, just thanks for listening to this anyway. So we have questions for today's show, starting with Justin, who submitted it using the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Justin wrote, hey, Joshua, James, and Todd, on episode 163, you talked about CO2 and regulators, and it made me think about whether temperature affects the CO2. Specifically, I have a teaser, and I store the CO2 bottle in the teaser with the beer because it was easy and I had the space. But now I'm curious if this will have a negative effect on usage. Keep up the good work. I really enjoy the podcast as well as the Patreon member benefits and community. Todd? Uh, Yeah, no, it won't affect anything. Not, uh, nothing at all. Like not even. Uh, no, 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 I I mean, it, it, it'll so, affect the space in the keyser, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the, uh, the only thing that it will do is that you have to remember that CO2 is a liquid at all times, unless until you completely run out of liquid and there's whatever gas is left in your, in your cylinder. So it, w- when you normally, if you're, if you put your gauge on there or you put your regulator on there, it'll say, the pressure is say 850 PSI. When you put it in the fridge, that same cylinder with the same amount in it will say 400 PSI. So it's going to drop quite a bit as far as how much it tells you you have in your tank. Uh, the dirty secret is that the, the gauge doesn't actually tell you how much you have in your tank. It just tells you what the PSI level is, uh, which is totally affected by the temperature because that's you know when it, when it breaks away from a liquid to a gas. It does it at different pressures depending on the temperature. So the only the only time that the, that the gauge actually works is when you're completely out of liquid and you're running out of gas. Then it starts to go down, and you can see you know when you only have say 200 psi and you had 400, then you know you're almost out because you're out of completely out of liquid. But as far as the way what, what, the effect of it being in the you know being colder. Uh, the only negative effect I could possibly think of is if you're doing high volume, you can freeze your regulator easier. So uh, that, yeah, that's, that's a good know, point. Regulators are prone to freezing. Uh, it happens a lot in bars when, when they're pouring a lot of beer from a lot of different places. So the one suggestion I might have is if you're force carbonating, it, it, when you force carbonate, you tend to turn it way up and use a lot of pressure. You might want to take it out of your, uh, out of your cooler and let it warm up a little bit before you force carbonate it with it. But if you're using like a tap right regulator with a red bonnet, you're probably fine anyway because it's high capacity anyway. It wouldn't be as likely to freeze. James, if you had a choice, at, like you know, you have you build out a teaser and you have the mm-hmm. space, but yeah. you would you rather put if you had the space, put the five pound cylinder in there or the or drilling through the back for the tubing? Like, is there? Besides maybe hitting a refrigerant line or something, is there yeah. anything detrimental That's to real, uh, You know, if you talk about a freezer converted over to a kegerator, it's got cooling lines that go all the way around the sidewalls. So I personally leave the gas cylinder out because I'd rather have cold storage for beer rather than gas that gets cold when it escapes the cylinder anyway. Um, you know, be, be real careful. A lot of times you can contact the manufacturer and they give you a diagram of, where those lines run 
or uh, if you're not sure and you can't get that information, start at the top and with a little tiny hole and kind of probe through it. You don't, you want to be very, very careful. And the higher, to, the closer to the lid you get, the less likely you're going to hit a, a, a line, yeah, a refrigerant line. Two things too, on a keezer, if you're building around it, you can drill in the back through the wood. Yeah, so you don't true. have to worry about it at all. And then on a kegerator, what we used to do uh, in the office was we would mix up alcohol and baking soda and smear it on the top and then plug it in. And then you would see, you could see where the lines were because the, it would, it would dry faster as they warmed up. Cause they're actually That's warm. Cool. In the beginning. Yeah. It would dry faster and you could see exactly where the lines were. Golly, look at you, a scientist over That's here. That's a great idea. I've never heard that before. <laughs> that is. My my only scientific things are like mating invisible ink out of my own urine. But yours is <laughs> that's a way better science project, man. <laughs> Wow, I'm impressed. Like yeah, that's pretty your dad, cool. well, your I'm dad impressed. told you about that, didn't he, Todd? Because he's a chemical engineer. You were uh, a poli sci major or something. I, think. I don't know how I learned, figured out how to do. It. Maybe somebody told me about it. I just passed it on. But that's what we used to do when we uh, when we got those kegerators in because they had most kegerators now don't have cool like the ones you buy don't have a lot of them don't have the cooling lines in the top, but the ones that we were buying then had them in the top. Interesting. And he didn't ask this, but, you know, I'd be remiss and someone would follow up with it, I'm sure, because I get a lot of people writing in or people in our audience and our in our communities and on or I see it on Reddit. A lot more people are getting into nitro, adding to their setups. Is it the same where if if they added nitro to their setup, can the nitro cylinder be in there with with in the teaser or should sure, it, it stay won't hurt anything because it's it's a gas. So it won't have any effect. Yeah. Right. I assumed I just didn't know because I. Uh, I talked for a long time. Uh, my wife, at one point many years ago, when we first got the kegerator set up, which is now at my father's house, she was like, oh, I want one of those to be for cold brew coffee. And I was like, oh, of course, that that's a great idea. But I was always, I put it off because I procrastinate, sure. But I also couldn't figure out logistically how to do it because I had a, key, a kegerator that had the pre-drilled hole in the back for tubing. And it was taken up by that one line from my CO2. And I didn't have space on the inside to put a cylinder, even just one of them, and then use that hole for the other cylinder. And so I couldn't figure out logistically how to to accomplish that with that 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 kegerator that I had. But um, I could have done your little method, find out where the coolant lines were, and just drilled another hole. I'm guessing like there's no inherent or just, just enlarge that hole. Or just enlarge that. Yeah, that would have been the smarter thing, man. Now I'm gonna edit that part out because I feel like I, <laughs> I feel like I came across as an idiot just now. And, no, not no, at all. No, absolutely no, not. No, uh, you guys. I don't. Okay. Anyways, Justin, thank you so much for submitting your question. I'm segueing out of this question. Uh, this is a good time to remind you if we do take your question on an episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour, we send you a twenty-five dollar gift card to KetConnection.com or HomebrewSupply.com. So check your inbox, and if you don't see anything from me, uh, check your spam first or email. Joshua at homebrewhappyhour.com. Second question comes from our friend Mark, who also used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Mark wrote, Hey, Joshua, Todd, handsome James, and friends. <laughs> Thanks again for keeping this show going. You guys and the Homebrew Happy Hour videos and website are the best resources out there. Keep up the awesome work. Mark knows how to get on the show. I like you, Mark. Uh, I am currently drawing up a sweet teaser build for my next big upgrade. I love nitro beers, and my wife loves nitro coffee, so I would like to incorporate a CMB nitro faucet like the V3N. However, I'm still confused on what limitations it could bring. Can you also use nitro faucets for normal CO2 beers? Or how about the other way around, like a normal faucet for nitro beers? I like the features the V3N offers, and if I can use it for normal beers too, I'd love to have that flexibility in each tap. Or do I have to keep things separate? Thanks for the help. You guys rock. So Mark is actually, he, we, Mark's a, a friend of the show. He follows us on Instagram. This is the the fighter pilot, Mark, James, in case you didn't oh, okay. know. Yeah, he's the one. He had that cool photo of him and his wife uh, at a German beer festival wearing our our shirt. Uh, many oh, okay, I remember that. Many months ago. Yeah, sharp, sharp yeah. kid. 
I, I when I saw that when I saw the recent uh, trailer for Top Gun, I almost messaged him on Instagram like, "Hey, you pumped about it?" But I was like, "Oh, that's gonna be lame. Just because he's in the military doesn't mean he's excited for Top Gun like I am." But <laughs> anyway, um, like I said before, people are interested in Nitro. Todd, what do you think? Or actually, James, this is this is literally your product. <laughs> um, what what about the V3N? Oh, that's a fantastic question for that product because. The cool thing about our nitro faucet is you can unscrew the nozzle. You can pull the little parts out of the nozzle and dispense just like a regular faucet. So you, that's something you can't do with uh, most stout faucets. It's a convertible faucet. You can go, and it's forward sealing, so that's another benefit. You can go, But I will tell you, when you pull the little diffuser disc and, and there's a little part underneath that, Put it somewhere where you know you're going to find it because they're little tiny and they're easy, lo easily lost. I could see Todd in the corner there. He, you covered what he was about to say, I think, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you've been drinking, be very, very careful. Yeah. <laughs> it's, all, it's not like, a, is it like a hydrometer where it's something you've lost before and experienced? It just... I've never lost a hydrometer. I've no, just no. broken just five breaks them. Good point. No, you're right. I, I meant like you had to look when ta when James brought up the just make sure you know where it is. You had a look on your face like, please, thank you for mentioning that kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, or, or I, I, I would yeah. lose it immediately. Yeah. Order order the because we have replacement parts for all that. If you order a V3N, go ahead and order extra parts for the nozzle. <laughs> then you're covered in case you ever lose them. But another thing that's that uh, you need to know about the nitrogen faucet is because it 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 has to take so much pressure at the nozzle. It's not a vented faucet. And a lot of people don't understand what that means. Well, what that means is a vented faucet, when you return to close, it evacuates the liquid in the nozzle. And the way it does that is it has a uh, air bleed through somewhere incorporated in the body when it's shut off. Because the nitrogen uh, is at such higher pressures and it's forcing through the nozzle, this faucet does not have a vent. So you need to need to have a drip tray underneath it because uh, a lot of people think it's dripping. Well, it's not. It's just the residual liquid that's in the nozzle is leaving the, the faucet. It's not a big deal, but, you know, some people kind of get, sometimes it helps to let people know that because of the way that was designed to handle the pressure up to the nozzle, it does not have a vent. It, on the product page at sambacter.com or any, most retailers, specifically like Cat Connection and Homebrew Supply, and I think other retailers include the video we produced on the faucet that has all that details too and does a breakaway and shows you how it's built and all that. I think it's a real cool design concept of that diffuser there at the nozzle. Because, yeah. uh, Todd, you're the one who told me, and it, in hindsight, it seemed like a silly question, but I didn't know any better. Like it, the faucet, the diffuser is removing the nitrogen as it pours, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, and yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, taking it out of solution. And that's what gives you that beautiful milky. I actually had a nitro beer last night. Those, those uh, milk stouts that where you pour them real quick upside down. And that's, it's pretty cool to watching it come up, but yeah. Yeah. That's the, what happens. I like the presentation of nitrogenated beverages, cold brew coffee, um, you remember Todd when we did a pitch to a DFW area coffee provider? I do. They don't. Yeah. They don't give me money, so I'm not saying their name, but they're very big. And and they and we did a product uh, pitch for them, and we showed that like it was funny because the way that cold brew coffee gets marketed, it, it always the photos it shows head on it like a beer. Remember? And this guy we did that we did the pour and showed it, and the cascade's beautiful. And the guy was like, "Well, where's the head?" And we're like. I don't know what you're talking about. Where's the, the head? <laughs> and, and like we ended up, he wanted us to, before we presented it to like the whole board or whatever, we shook the keg of coffee up and, and manufactured a head so that it would appear to be like a beer. I was like, I don't know. I, okay. Every time I go to our local uh, coffee shop and I see cold brewed nitrogenated poured, I don't see a head on it, but uh, apparently that's the expectation now from, <laughs> from marketing. Yeah. Well, it's, it's strange because the, um, so when you pour, when you do a nitrogenated beer, it also has CO two. It's a beer gas mixture. But I, we didn't know this when we did that. This was my favorite part of the presentation. We had no idea that you can't have any CO two with a coffee. It has to be a hundred percent nitrogen because the CO two gives it an off taste. And uh, so we we didn't have a head. We had CO two in it. We we pretty much did everything you could possibly do wrong in a presentation. Right. 
Yeah, you brought, we didn't yeah. get the account either. Isn't that weird? Yeah, yeah so, if, uh, and you, if you brought me, so that was like B team already. I mean, the the, yeah. the bar was low, and I wasn't you even and, you and David. Yeah, yeah I wasn't even full time for you at the time, man. <laughs> That's what led to this full time position. Gosh, you make yeah. bad choices sometimes, Mister Burns. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tell me about it. yeah. But yeah, Mark. Don't they still have the kegerator? Oh yeah, I sent him an invoice. Like I send him one like once a year. It's been six years. <laughs> I send him one. Not getting that one back. No, no. no. Yeah, well, yeah. It was a write off. I'm sure. Or Todd, I think you might have taken it out of my first check when I came to work for you full time. That was the deal. I, I don't think I have yet. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you you've gotten plenty of money from me in five dollar bets and hundred dollar bets. So. We're, we're okay, and I'm not bringing that back up. We're done with that. So, uh, Mark, thank you so much for submitting the question. We actually have time, and I did inject one more question into this week's show from Melina, who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com as well. Melina wrote, hey, Joshua, Todd, and James, I love listening to the show and learning everything about homebrewing. I have recently started homebrewing myself, but I have a few questions. One being that I am on day four of fermentation of an amber ale, and my airlock has been uneven the whole time. All the liquid is on one side of the airlock and it has yet to balance out. From what I know, day three and four are supposedly the most active days, but mine isn't doing anything. Is this a bad sign or will my beer be all right? How can I avoid this in the future if possible? Thank you so much for all you guys do. Melina. Todd, uh, you know, we've talked before about sometimes fermentation, crowds and actually happening and it could be seeping out of places. W yeah. Would... I know if we knew potentially, uh, like if she's using. I didn't using really it. understand what she meant about half the airlock. What I didn't, I didn't understand that part at all. Oh well, uh, so it, so I'm, so maybe she's using an S airlock and uh, the oh, okay. It, with yeah, I was thinking the other kind of airlock. So that makes that clears it, it up. Makes perfect. it makes more sense now. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. So, I mean, it it. it if you're using imperial yeast, we've had all most of the activity happen in a day. Uh, it just depends on what style of beer it is, everything. I mean, it may not be, it may have been close to being done after two days it, it, or you can always have, I mean, we had, we had one where we had two buckets right next to each other. We've told this story before on the podcast. One was bubbling fine. One wasn't. And uh, finally I opened it up and there was a little bitty piece of plastic that had gotten stuck and it was just coming out of there instead of the airlock and the beer was fine. So yeah. things can happen. James, you've had that. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I think as long as one of those has liquid in it, then it's doing its job. It's, it's preventing oxygen from getting inside. But you know what? A lot of people brew, especially one of our favorite breweries in Germany, they don't even use an airlock. They use open fermentation. So you know, if you've got an airlock, do a little push on the lid, make sure the liquid moves, and then you know you've got a good seal. But, you know, as long as there's liquid in one, one of those bubbles, it's doing what it needs to do, and, and I wouldn't worry so much about it. Well, James, in your opinion, is four days enough to feel comfortable opening it and, and doing a reading? I'm assuming it, assuming there is no other form of getting, you know, like there's no bottom spigot or. Sure. Or as long as the uh, high crowds and we would call high crowds and the highest activity of yeast is kind of way. There's no need in uh, trying to test or gravity during high crowds. And so, you know, as the bubbles continue to get faster and faster and as they fall down, you know, if you've got a bubble, what do you say, Todd, once every 30 seconds or something like that, yeah. you know, test it then. Right. Cause that was one thing that you've kind of instilled in me when I worry about if our beer's finished and I like, well, just test it. And I was like, Oh no, I don't want to oxygenate or blah, blah, blah. Cause you know, we use that, that Genesis or we'll use just buckets. Mm -hmm. And you and Todd both were like, I don't think there's any problem, man. Just open it and take <laughs> take yeah. a reading. And if... No, just open your little sample valve and take a. Oh, reading. shut up. We're not all of us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. wait, you don't have one of those? Oh, yeah, you don't have one of those. Never mind. This is a good time to remind you the show is brought to you by Spike Bruton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know what I do? It, it doesn't matter whether I have a bucket or if I have a uh, carboy, a glass carboy. I'll have a little smaller. We have like a one-gallon bucket, and I'll do a slow pour into there and then seal off the carboy or the pail and then pour that into the, the hydrometer vessel. Oh, that's smart. I like that. That way you don't disturb the beer and you can get it. You get that done, get the thing closed back up, and then you can test and taste and all that. 
the, uh, and one of the, you know, not to throw Spock under the bus, but one of the problems with that sample valve is I've noticed that I don't get very full kegs when I have one of those. Because <laughs> yeah, me too. I tend to do a lot of sampling. <laughs> I'm doing a lager right now that's going to sit for like six weeks. And, you know, I'm, I'm doing a, a test on it every three days, maybe just because I want to taste the beer. But I'm yeah, eight it. ounce pour. Yeah, exactly. But I'm saying it's because I want to see what the gravity is. You know, what's funny, James, is he's not lying. He gave me a full glass sample when I was over there. He was like, "Hey, I do it all the time." And he, he, well, he, he, he pitched it as like, "Hey, you want to try this? It's, it's, you know, it, I'm about to cold crash it, whatever." I was like, "Yeah, sure, try." I thought he was going to get the little thing. He poured me a full glass, <laughs> and it's delicious. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's already cool carbonated. About their fermenters, you know, if you've got it on gas and we've got the cooling coil. Man, when it's done, cold crash that sucker and put it on gas and what, Todd, in about a week, it's you've got beer. It's I mean, a serving it's, vessel, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a bright tank. It's a bright you tank. Know? What was that thing? <laughs> Remember we interviewed them at Homebrew Con like 2015, the one from Whirlpool. is called like the Vini. Oh, that's uh, right. The, the Vini Vini yes. I mean, I forget the name of what it was called, yeah, but that looked like a washing machine. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It was, yeah, it was. Uh, but that basically, they were pitching what you're talking about here, like what you can do with conical fermenters now. They're not. No. They're not just vessels to ferment in. They're freaking like <laughs> with that glycol on there. So you're not tank. like, yeah, you're gonna start serving already, right? You. Just, you uh, yeah. with that glycol setup. I don't know if I mentioned it to y'all already, and I I don't think I said it on the show when I asked Ryan about doing. You know, oh, if I get the the conical, should I put it in like a cold room, convert this room, or should I get glycol? And without hesitation, he's like glycol every time, glycol, which is what y'all been telling me. But I hate when y'all are right. Like I don't it just doesn't sit right with me. I I, I, I want I want to have. Uh, I, I was like, well, no, hear me out, Ryan. The cold room. He was like, no, no, do black call. Why? What kind of a question is that? And basically, everything Todd told me. He's like, do black call, moron. And, and it's not a, it's not expensive either. That's the really. Thing. He said a moron at the end too, huh? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. It's so nice to have you guys back uh, in the country <laughs> and safe and sound and doing the show with me again, guys. It's real. It's real nice. But anyways, Melina, thank you so much for submitting your question, guys. Uh, I, I've kept y'all for a while. I do apologize, but that, that, uh, people have been sending in questions like crazy last week with Joe. I did three. I'm going to try to get three in. If y'all like, like doing three. Yeah, uh, three. Okay. Then I'm going to start adding three and guy who was running, uh, who left us the bad review. I'm going to try to cut the small talk down from 40 minutes to like 18 minutes. Okay. So just give us, give us a break on that. But anyways, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time coming this week. It was great seeing y'all on Monday and, um, I look forward to having y'all again next week. Thanks. And, See ya. and that will do it for this episode of the homebrew happy hour. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page, or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. Thank you to our show sponsor, Spike Brewing Equipment, for supporting us and the homebrewing community. Learn more about their incredible equipment at Spike Brewing dot com forward slash homebrew happy hour and make the most of your brew day on behalf of todd burns james carlson and the pearl media network i'm joshua steubing thank you for listening This program is made possible by the checkbook of Mr. Todd Burns and by contributions to our newly launched Patreon by viewers like you. Visit patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and join our community. Thank you.